Well, okay, I'll admit it, I was wrong. I should have known better. Honestly, this is way more complicated now than it had to be. This could have been so much easier had I just done it while I was in there. When you're doing a large repair, like say an oil pan on an X5, you actually have access to a whole bunch of other things, like, well, the motor mounts, which would be really freaking easy while the subframe is out of the car. But my ridiculous butt, Mr. Cheapskate on Project Cheapskate, decided, you know what, they're not leaking, it doesn't feel rumbly or anything, we're gonna skip those for now. Even though they're not all that expensive, especially when you buy them on Amazon. And you know what happens? A month after I do the oil pan, I get some octopus black ink, squid ink on my driveway. It's not oil, it's the hydraulic fluid from one of these stupid things. Same thing happened on my 540, I, though I had bought motor mounts for that for when I was doing the timing guides, but what a freaking bummer. So now I need to do the motor mounts after everything has been back together and running well, actually, for a while. The problem with that is the BMW instructions call for pulling the engine support arms off of both sides of the block, which are held on with aluminum bolts that I don't have. So what I'm gonna try to do today is I'm gonna try to do the motor mounts without pulling those arms off, which means I'm gonna have to drop the subframe. Again. Now I'm working on a lift, so that's much easier than if I was just on the ground. And if you're doing it by the BMW instructions, you have to pull the intake manifold off to get this driver's side support arm off. I don't really wanna pull the intake manifold off. It's been off like 17 times. All the different repairs on this car. Lots of repairs on this car. Let's see if we can get this done without pulling the engine arms off and having to order more aluminum bolts. If you're new around here, I'm Jason, and this is Project Cheapskate. Out here in the shop, I try to accomplish as many small projects, big projects, and every project in between as I can in a way that might help you do it at home. We're gonna get started by unbolting the top of our motor mounts. We've got an 18 millimeter up here that we can get to pretty easily with a long extension. We'll just leave the nut down there to find it later on both sides here. And if you're new to this series, Project Cheapskate, this is my $500 X5 that I'm now 4,000 or so dollars into it because of all the deferred maintenance that this car had. Probably not my best purchase decision, but not near as bad as my $4,000 540 six speed that I'm converting to an M Sport. That I'm over $10,000 into. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and put an E10 down here on our steering shaft. We're gonna disconnect our steering shaft. Because again, if we're dropping the subframe, this is gonna have to come off anyhow. And then there is one motor mount hold down bolt that we can get to on the passenger side, E12. Now we can go up and see what's going on down below. But before we do, we have to support the engine. I forgot about that. I always forget about that one. And to support the engine, I'm using my handy dandy eBay support arm here that I made or modified a little bit. I modified this to fit on the frame rail. And we need our modified tow hook. We had to smooth the end here to fit into the cylinder head. So underneath here, you can actually still see some of the dried up residue along this subframe rail here that's kind of turned brownish black from this engine mount. Now, originally I thought, shoot, did I get another oil leak? But when you touch the fluid, it's not quite oily and it dries kind of weird on the driveway where oil doesn't ever actually dry. That was one way I knew that right above here, that motor mount had failed. Now that we know where we're chasing, we need to go ahead and get all of these splash panels off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rear tranny cover off here, the front panel and our center support section. Well, with all of our panels off underneath, you can see we have pretty awesome access to the passenger motor mount. The bracket, Yes and no. I'm sure we could finagle this guy out of here. It's got these three giant aluminum bolts on it. We could probably twi twist and tilt it to get it around the exhaust. The driver's side though, I definitely see where you'd have to pull the intake manifold in order to get that upper bracket because you have very limited access down underneath here. I'm gonna have to lower the car, pull the steering shaft and get to the front bolt. <laughs> <laughs> 
up here on this driver's side motor mount because I don't think I'll be able to get to it all that well from the bottom. Before we can lower the subframe, we got to take some of the tension off of the suspension. So I'm going to disconnect the sway bar. I'll disconnect the thrust arm. I'll disconnect the inside lower control arm as well as the central point on the strut. And then we should have pretty unrestricted access to start lowering this guy down absent our steering rack. But if you saw my oil pan video, you'll know that one thing we learned was that the subframe wants to pivot side to side. I only have two pole jacks here in the shop. So at that point, I made this balance bar that I can put across the rear of the subframe. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull those rear bolts first. Then we're gonna try to slide our balance bar in. Now I can support both sides of the rear at the same time. This pull jack in the front will support the middle and go across both sides of the front. All right, I could see it started to shift. Now I still have the steering rack connected up there and I think we're gonna have enough room. Now remember up front, we do have some lines connected to this cooler. I don't have the cooler disconnected. So we wanna make sure we have enough stretch on those guys. Oh yeah, this motor mount's cooked. So close, so close. Now I'm just lowering the back right now, not the front. There's that black fluid coming out of the mount because I flipped it upside down. Gross. There we go, that one's out. So I went ahead and I pulled this bolt here to the front of this cooler just because I didn't like the tension on that line. That way I can get a little bit more drop out of this. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the steering rack right here and here because I'm having some difficulty getting it off of the shaft up there and I really don't want to break that plastic housing. It went on really well after I did the oil pan. That's what we needed. All right, that's two mounts. Well, the new mounts look to be identical on either side. So I'm gonna go with that that's the case. At least I'm going to hope. There we go. Got one in. That's two. Turn it the right direction. And while it's down like this, I'm going to go ahead and get the bolts in. Click, click. I sure hope this light over here that's blinding me is helping you to be able to see. We're just putting the two bolts back in here. Nothing special going on. All right. We'll get to torque these from the top. Let's go ahead and start cranking this guy back up and in. There we are. Sitting up on the motor mounts. We got our subframe lined up. Let's get some bolts in. Now we need to get the four bolts back in the steering rack. We'll put our 10 mil back in our front cooler here. Well, with our subframe back down and in, you can see it lifted the motor quite a bit because those old mounts had sunk so much. We go ahead and get this guy back off so that it'll make it easier for us to get to the top of our bolts. Now, while I was down underneath, I put the nuts on top of our motor mounts so that we could just throw our tool on up here. That's good there. And then our E12s, we'll put just a little bit of a on those as well. Okay. One last bolt from the top. We need to make sure to get our steering shaft bolt back. Okay, 
Motor mounts, done. I still need to go back underneath and retorque the suspension, but I'm looking at about an hour to do this with filming, which means if I wasn't filming, probably would have been more like 30 odd minutes or less potentially. Not a lot of bolts we had to take apart to get those out of there. All right, so let's wrap this up. What was the cause of my failure here? Well, I think that there are two primary causes. The first, age. It, this car is 14 years old with 178, 79-ish thousand miles on it. That's a pretty big contributing factor. The date on this is 2009, so original mounts. The second is oil. There was lots of oil leaks on this motor and there was oil just about everywhere. That oil running down onto this rubber surface, that's not gonna be great for it. Another example of that is the motor mounts that I did on my 540. And you can see these guys cracked all the way around because they were pooling up with leaking oil. In fact, this one, you can still see oil sitting up here in the top. The mounts themselves, these were really easy to tell on the 540 that they had collapsed and sunk down, especially when placed next to the new mounts. You can see that here on screen. These are a little bit more difficult, but what you can see is that the bottom here is all blown out. And while it was in the car, it was actually a nice round bubble. And then when I shake this, it goes all over the place and starts to squirt fluid out of this weep hole here. And you can see the color of this fluid is this dark brown, black. It dries really weird on concrete. You do not want that to happen. So what is the lesson inside of all of this? Well, sometimes while you're in there, you should probably just do the other things that you have access to, especially if the access is so much less restricted, like when I was doing the oil pan on this car it would have made complete sense to do the mounts at that time. Maybe not the transmission mount, but the transmission mount would have been great to do when I was doing the tranny work on this the couple of times before, but now I've got a tranny mount to install. When I install the oil pan gasket on my wife's 2016 X5, the N55 engine, it has the same problems as the N52K, they leak. I will do motor mounts at that point because I'm gonna do the work the same. I'm gonna drop the subframe to do the oil pan. It's kind of a bummer that this happened, but what is the lesson here? I feel like this was actually pretty easy. You had six suspension bolts, a couple of under tray bolts, the steering rack, and one hydraulic line that I had to unbolt with a couple 10 millimeters. And that subframe was boop, boop down and out of the way, and these things popped right out, no problem. Was it easier than trying to pull the arms off of the side of the block? In my opinion, yes. I didn't have to pull the intake manifold and deal with any of that stuff or potential air leaks that might come with breaking the PCV lines, which are known to be fragile with time. Mine are all new on this car because, well, I've been working on just about everything. So, lesson learned, I should have done these originally. You can see that the steel arm or the aluminum bracket on the side of the motor was resting on this steel bracket. It completely cut the ears off that are supposed to be there. These little flappy guys on the other mount, this one is getting cut off. But all told, not a bad job. Not too bad from underneath. If you were doing this on jack stands, it'd be a little tougher. You'd have to use jacks to support everything and it would be more work. But totally doable nonetheless. Thank you for watching, really appreciate it. Stay tuned for part two in the next video. We're gonna go ahead and try to install the transmission mount without the special tools. A little backyard mechanic, shade tree stuff. See what we can get figured out. Again, I really appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video.